Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your swords. Warriors of the Most High. Armed and dangerous. Blessed and highly flavored. Oh, yes. First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. Glory. Isn't it nice that things are, there's a big shift going on, I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. It's a holy shift. <laughs> things are changing, quaking, shaking. And only those things that can handle the shaking that isn't shaken off. When you see vibration, you see the, all the dust and all the dirt and begin to crumble off. Only those things that are solid will be able to stand. Because the shaking is getting stronger and stronger. We don't realize how much is going on in the unseen realm. What's, what's really happening? Listen, this country, the world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. That means that they thrive, grab hold of this, on blood. They thrive on blood. There must be bloodshed for them to succeed. There must be torment and torture. Anything that's an abominable to God Almighty is what they do. That's why you have 300,000 children missing a year just in this country. You don't hear so much about the search for them because the world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. These children are taken captive. They're caged. They're sexually abused. They're tormented and then they're eaten. The most abominable things that is going on. And people have no idea what's happening. And it's even in our own government that does this. They think that the Bohemian Grove is just nothing but some kind of ritual and there's no, a fantasy thing. There's a human being sacrificed right in front of these government leaders. And they ignore it because of their fame and their fortune and their false promises. There is a war going on right now. It's been going on for years. They create wars to create bloodshed. They create chaos so they can change rules, change positions. They put people in debt. That's why this country is in debt. They create chaos, and then they lend you the money, and then they collect interest, and then that's where they... So everything is, to them, money is power. Money's power. Does everybody understand that? So in this, there is an area where you and I must fight. fight and in this fight we unite so that we can come against all the wickedness that is going on does everybody understand this fight is intense it's intense and God has called me and you to fight hallelujah 1st Peter chapter 1 in verse 3. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials or challenges. 
that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls." Very, very powerful. In other words, we have a living hope which is active. In other words, it's activated. It's a hope of the future. Hope is always associated with future. Future or eternal. You and I are going to be challenged to test your faith, your connection. You are going to be tested to check your connection with God Almighty. The connection with the eternal realm of the kingdom of Christ which leads to eternal rewards. You and I will be challenged. We will be tested in all of these areas. Why? Because God wants to raise us up. He's always trying to bring us to another level. And in this other level that God brings me and you to, he arms us more. That's why he says endurance. We must endure all things. In Psalm 127, In Psalm 127, let's speak it. Hallelujah. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. In other words, unless you, will not, you and I allow the Lord to build a house, it won't stand. It's in vain. It's in vain. In other words, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. So we're either laboring on to the Lord or we're not. There's self-promotion, not giving glory to God. You know, I, I can only share with you in the time of right now, we know that there's a lot of selfie going on. You see a lot of me, myself, and I going on. Lovers of self and everything else. But God wants to get me and you to the resources. He provides us with resources to build according to his way in his kingdom and not our own. Amen. And Matthew 6. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as a hypocrites do in the synagogues and in streets that they may be glorified from men, that they may receive glory from men. Surely I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be seen in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will himself reward you when? Openly. Openly. In other words, rewards are received by setting eternal goals. Does everybody got that? Rewards are received by setting eternal goals. Why? One of the things God wants to do is he gives us a temporary plan. You know our plans and all the plans that are here are temporary. Amen? Amen. So in temporary plans, there should be eternal goals. In temporary plans, there always should be eternal goals. If your temporary plans are not associated with an eternal goal, then it's not a plan of God. In verse 19. Let's speak it. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Wow. 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will. In other words, treasures in heaven is establishing setting, establish the setting eternal goals and temporary plans. Everybody has certain plans. They have a plan. What we want is plan A, not plan B. Amen? Plan A. Not that we don't have plan B sometimes, and sometimes plan B is God's plan because we have a plan of our own when it doesn't start working. We fall into God at plan B. But what, what's happening is God is trying to establish us in the area where we always have eternal goals. Why? Because you're preparing eternal things. You know, think about when we, you and I were younger, if you can think that far back. Um, anyways. If you were to be saving a penny, remember how many times we thought about saving a penny? If I could just save a penny a day, how much money I'd have. Amen. So what God is doing is preparing things that you and I are doing right now are being stored up in heaven. Not that we don't get rewarded temporarily here, but we get, we get, there's a, a rewards in heaven that's for you and me. No matter what we do. Now we don't do things for rewards. We do things because we love him and we're grateful. We're not trying to count up our rewards or keep it on the list. Let's see, I have this coming, I have that coming. That's, that's, that's in vain. Amen? That's in vain. 1 Corinthians 3. Now let's go to Matthew 7 for a minute while we're here. Matthew 7. Eternal goals. Eternal goals. It's verse 21. Let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Whoa. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like in a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. So he gives us guidelines to build. Amen? He gives us guidelines through his word, through revelation, through guidance of his spirit. The, the word says that the Holy Spirit tells us things to come. He guides us into all truth. So in this, he is preparing everything for me and you so that no matter what we do, there's always an eternal goal. An eternal goal. And whatever plans we're doing, there's an eternal goal. Again, he gives us guidelines to build a temporary plan with eternal goals. Is everybody okay? Amen. 1 Corinthians 3. Verse 9, is everybody there? 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. Let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building, according to the grace of God which was given to me. As a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed in how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid with in Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be, become clear for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire. Fire is also challenges. It will be revealed by challenges. In other words, he will test you. <clears throat> and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a what? A reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells 
in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Building the foundation of, on God's word and his presence through the Holy Spirit. And what does he always bring? Eternal goals. There's always an eternal goal in everything you and I are doing. That thought is always there. If it isn't, it's not a full connection. There's partial. And Colossians chapter 3. In verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, which, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your what? Your mind or your thoughts, your attitude, your motive, and your desires. You're always connecting it with Christ. Set your mind on things above and not on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with, which is, with his deeds and have put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of God who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do so. Building on the foundation of God's word and his presence, setting our minds, our thoughts on the things of kingdom. Why? Because when you're due, you're always setting eternal goals. There's eternal goals in, every, in all of our plans. Eternal goals. In Philippians chapter 3. Verse 17. Eternal goals. Let's speak it. Brethren. Join in following my example and note those who walk as you have us for a what? A pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. We are citizens in heaven. We are citizens in heaven. Does everybody get that? Amen. I mean, we have a dual citizenship, but we, have, we are citizens of heaven. And in this, we are building our treasures in heaven. They're waiting for me and you. That's why we must establish eternal goals in whatever we do. Everything must be kingdom. Everything must be kingdom-minded and kingdom business. Philippians 4. In verse 4. What is its first word? Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? At hand. Be anxious for everything. Oh, hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing. How many of y'all know the devil loves to push you? And there's that gentle push. Be anxious for nothing. Nothing. 
But in everything by prayer, by what? Prayer. prayer. Okay. If you do not have a prayer life, you do not have a kingdom life. And you cannot set kingdom goals without a prayer life. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Again, it starts with prayer, communication, intercession, fellowship. I'm going to repeat that. It starts with prayer, with communication, intercession, fellowship, and warfare. Communication, intercession, fellowship, and warfare. That's what your prayer life should be. Why? Eternal goals, because God is going to always release to you eternal goals in a temporary plan. They are always released through prayer. That's why so many people don't know what they're doing, because they have no prayer life. Matthew 25. Where are eternal goals released? In, temp in prayer. Has everybody got it? In prayer. I get all my, all my information in prayer. It starts with prayer. Then from prayer, revelation comes. Illumination comes. Everything comes, but it must start in prayer. Matthew 25. Let's speak it. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Well, there's a lot of goats. They manifest real easy. Verse 33. He will set the sheep on the, his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on the right, Come, you blessed of my fa father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when I was what? Hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? Or when did we see you stranger and take you in or naked or clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. What was that? That's a guideline of what? Building the treasures in heaven. These are their eternal goals. Then he will also say to those on the left, aren't you glad you're not the left? <laughs> Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For when I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you didn't, did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Surely I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will all, they, they will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into where? Eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal goals in a temporary plan. In James chapter 4. Actually, before we go there, let's go to Matthew 26 while we're here. Matthew 26, verse 36. Jesus was the prime example of eternal goals with a temporary plan. I mean, you know, when you think about it, 
He was the prime example of eternal goals and a temporary plan. In verse 36, I think I said that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, saying to his disciples, sit here while I go and what? Pray, Pray over there. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and, and deeply distressed. And he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit is deed and willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. Weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them again asleep, for his, their eyes were heavy. Isn't it amazing how the enemy loves to get you tired, man? You pick up the word of God, and all of a sudden, oh. You want to pray, and all of a sudden, man, I, I'm real hungry, or I'm just tired. Man, I just can't pray. Man, you're just praying the Holy Ghost and bust that flesh. Amen. Bust that soul. That's why God gave you tongues. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them, went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed in the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Again, Jesus was the prime example. How did he get his? Look at how much he prayed. How did he get his eternal goals? By prayer. But he got his temporary plans with eternal goals by prayer. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Go to James 4. Eternal goals. Paul was a prime example also. He had a temporary plan, but it was all about serving religion, really not serving Christ. He thought he was doing the right thing. But for him, it wasn't eternal goals. It was temporary goals. See, so many people live by a temporary goal and not eternal goal. And the Lord says, that's your reward then. You can have it right here. You can have all these rewards here, but you won't have them here. Amen. Amen. Until Paul got slam dunk filled with the Holy Ghost. Then he realized, yo, I've been living for temporary goals. I need to live for an eternal goal. But I'm going to seek the kingdom by the Spirit of God so I can get information on how to build the temporary plan with eternal goals. James 4, verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world, friendship with the world, the world looks nothing but for a temporary goal. Friendship with the world, that means you're under the authority of Satan. You fellowship, you lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. It's all about self. Friendship with the world makes you a friend of the enemy. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. That means you become God's enemy. God's not your enemy. We become his then. Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. He resists the what? Proud. The proud. This is powerful. But gives grace to the humble. Now, grace is God's plan, isn't it? So he's going to give you his temporary plan with eternal goals. He gives it to who? The humble. Remember Daniel? The angel came and said, the moment that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself, we heard you, and I have been sent to you. 
Therefore, submit to what? God resists the devil and he'll flee and, the, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will what? He will lift you up. He will promote you. And Luke chapter 2. Eternal goals and temporary plans. I think that's enough. Did you get it? And where does, where does it come from? Where do you have to first start? Prayer. Prayer. Prayer takes denying yourself. Prayer. Again, in prayer, there's communication, there's fellowship, there's revelation. God begins to release things. But goals, the plan and eternal goals come through prayer. The foundation is built by the Word of God, does everybody understand? And by the Spirit, the anointing. That is the foundation. But God begins to bring everything into order and begins to release and build that path. In Luke chapter 2, in verse 41. It gives us an understanding that whatever we're doing, are we looking at eternal goals? We all have plans. And the word says, man plans, God laughs. <laughs> That's why the word says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. But seek his righteousness. And it'll be added unto you. Amen? Amen? And Luke 2, 41. Even in our, wherever we are in our businesses and whatever we're doing, there should always be eternal goals. In other words, they're, they're to be used to reach as many souls as possible. Everyone that comes through these doors, we want them to be able to leave with a king, uh, penetra penetrating prayer booklet and whatever we do. We don't realize how many people, we get calls from people who finally open their penetrating prayer book and go, my God, I didn't know. Or people have got packages and videos or whatever it is, they didn't know. So wherever we are, whatever we're doing, there should always be an eternal goal there. We're laboring onto the Lord, not onto ourselves. In verse 41, let's speak it. Oh, uh, verse Verse 40, I'm sorry. Uh, and, and the child, what? This is Jesus, grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the, boy, the days as they returned, the boy, Jesus, lingered behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to, Jer to Jerusalem seeking him. Can you imagine losing God? <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? I mean, what a responsibility they had, right? Here they are raising up the Son of God, God himself, and they're supposed to keep an eye on him, and they lose him? Whoa. But they didn't lose him. He knew where they were. <laughs> so anyways, when they did not find him, they, went, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days... I mean, think of the parallel, three days in hell. After three days, I mean, do you see how the word always confirms itself? Now, after it was three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? 
Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And Jesus said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Why? Because he had eternal goals. You are about your father's business. You are about eternal goals. And everything you do, no matter what it is, no matter where it is, and no matter when it is, everything is about setting eternal goals and a temporary plan. That's why you and I were rescued. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed, Lord, be protected and imparted in the name of Jesus. Let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. And let your kingdom be established in us and through us that we may see those things to establish and be about your business with eternal goals and a temporary plan in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.